Another of Charlie Finley's impulsive moves saw him bring Harry Carey to Oakland for a year as lead announcer. Can you tell us about that season from your perspective? Yeah, it was one of the worst seasons a guy could spend if you're in my position. But uh, I always, I always admired uh, Harry as as an announcer, and I, I didn't really hear him that much. I went in Ken, when I was in Kansas City, I could hear his St. Louis broadcast once in a while, and everybody knew, you know, Harry Carey throughout Missouri. He was Mister Everything there. I uh, had the enthusiasm and all the stuff, color and everything. And uh, so Charlie called me up one day and he said, hey, I'm uh, so it was Sunday afternoon. And he said, I'm bringing in a new announcer. And I said, oh, he, I said, who? And he said, I'm, I've got Harry Carey right here in the office with me. And he's been fired by the Cardinals. And he said, uh, I'm going to hire him, bring him out to Oakland, and we're going to do big things out there. And I, I couldn't, couldn't believe what I was hearing, but... Uh, at any rate, he hired Harry Carey and uh, told Harry, uh, you know, Harry said, well, I'm coming out there. I'm, I'm going to be the number one guy. And, and Charlie said, well, that's fine. That's fine. We'll work out to anything and stuff like that. Uh, he said something, you know, said that Ronnie's good, and I don't, I don't want to, you know, get rid of him or anything. He said, hey, you guys can get along. So Charlie told me to get along with him. And I, I at the press conference said, well, I've always – admired Harry Carey. If I had one game to listen to any broadcaster do in the country, I'd probably choose Harry Carey to do it. So, so we'll, you know, we're happy to have him here on our broadcast. But the first day of spring training when he showed up down in Mesa, Arizona, we had a little ballpark, Rendezvous Park. And I always, before the game would sit out there, there's a, uh, there was a little bench, a wooden bench out there, right up against the fence down the right field foul line, and several of the newspaper guys and radio guys, we'd all go out there and sit in suntan. Uh, before the game and waiting, well, here came Harry into the into the field, and uh, <clears throat> obviously he had talked some people around there and said, "Where where's where's Monty Moore?" Uh, they pointed out to where I was, and he came out there and introduced himself and sat down for a while and talked and everything. And then he got ready to leave, and, and he started walking back towards the towards the field, and uh, he said, "Oh, hey, that's my briefcase right there. Bring that up to the press box for me when you come." said, I'm going to go talk to some people. I said, wait a minute. Harry, I'm not your caddy. Let's get this start. Get this underway right now. I am not your caddy. If you want that up in the press box, you take it to the press box. And <clears throat> and that started it right then. And then later on, within a week or two, he said, now you got to understand, I'm the number one guy on this broadcast. I'm the number one guy. And I said, Charlie, I mean, Harry, you can be called number one all you want. You can call yourself number one. The fans are going to determine who's number one, and it doesn't matter to me if I'm number one or number two, and what you call me or what anybody calls me, I'm just going to do my job and let the fans decide who's number one, who's number two. So is that kind of a that kind of a thing? And, and I, I I lost almost all respect for him broadcasting because he would, you know, he's always had to have his beer in the booth on the on the table and stuff like that, and he was. He wouldn't stay in the booth when he wasn't announcing. He didn't want to do any color stuff. You know, for me, he just wanted to go around to the press box and go around and smooth well. And uh, he actually got fired by KNBR, not by Charlie. KNBR, the radio station, and the sponsors, but KNBR basically because he would go out at night after ball games over to to the other side of the to the, to the bay and and <clears throat> and uh, uh, spend time in these bars, and he would plug those bars on the air, you know, saying, oh, last night when I was at so-and-so bar, man, I ran into some real baseball fans. He'd always get their name in there so he'd get free drinks. <laughs> and uh, KNBR wouldn't stand for that, and they just, they let Charlie know that was the end of that. And uh, so my experience with him was I admired him for what he did, and he was perfect fit for Chicago uh, because, they, you know, that was the kind of crowds they had. And... and uh, you can't deny the fact he was a great, you know, he was a great, colorful broadcast announcer. But that was my experiences with Harry Carey.